lot of people talk about monorepos companies like google microsoft and others have been doing monorepo for a very very long period of time i also work on a monorepo at microsoft there are a lot of people who talk about monorepo but don't understand what exactly monorepo means they often confuse with terms like monolithic multirepo monorepo there are a lot of advantages of a monorepo but there are few disadvantages as well and in this video we are all going to talk about monorepos so let's get started uh, before understanding monorepos uh, let's cover what we are going to talk about in this video the first one would be uh, what is monorepo what they are and second would be like you know what are the advantages of using a monorepo when should you use a monorepo third could be like disadvantage of monorepo because there are a lot of things that you need to handle while using a monorepo so yeah let's get started and quickly talk about uh, what are monorepos uh, first thing is you need to understand like you know monorepos have been there for a very very long time uh, and google started it and there are a lot of companies following it so uh, there are other uh, code structuring architecture as well and there could be like you know monolithic that you have might have already uh, heard about this monolithic architecture there are other architecture like you know multi repo architect ar architecture as well so multi repo architecture is sometimes confusing with mono repos because this is somehow related to our mono repos but they are not related exactly because what happens in multi repo is you know the management of dependencies management of, management of dependency is differently handled in case of multi repo in case of mono repo there is a common management for dependency and config and other things right we are going to look into that but simply like we can divide this as but in this video we are going to look into what are mono repos uh, first you need to understand like what does a mono repo mean so just consider uh, you have a very big you know company and you are building app for it you are building an android app you are building a uh, ios app you are building a website you are building an api and server so for example uh, let, let's let's list down like you know what what you can build as a company so for example you want to have a server right you want to have an app that could be like you know divided into android app or ios app you can have your little you know ui code for a website and so and so forth so there could be other things as well that you want to have in your app so ultimately this is your entire code base what we do in a mono repo is we take this entire code base and what we do is we structure this in one repository in multi repository there are you no know, different 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 repository and they are interlinked somewhere but in mono repo what happens is you have only one big repository and you structure your code in that itself for example you bring your server code out here you bring your app code out here for example android app is listed out here your ios app is listed out here or your web app is listed out here so this can be considered as a mono repo right so you might be thinking like why someone will do that because this will turn out to be very gigantic like code base and it will be very difficult difficult to manage right so there are a lot of advantages that let's talk about the advantages first but this was started uh, by google to you know maintain everything at one place right and still their code bases still a lot of code bases exist in mono repo and there there are tons of lines of code right now imagine the complexity that comes with you know big mono repos like like the build time increases and a lot of things right so let's just quickly look into a small uh, graph where we can understand mono repos better let's say uh, you have a app right you have a big app or you say you know a lot of repositories lot of repos right you want to structure it very well so you choose architecture of mono repo so how gonna how you are gonna you know architect it for example let's consider you have a app where there is one project p1 and there is another project p2 
and there is another project that is out here that is p3 that is a gigantic project and there is one more gigantic project that is p4 and let's say there are n number of projects right like this structure like this now what you do is you wanna relate and make this uh, mono repo so ultimately whenever you are keeping a code in your mono repo how it turns out to be you know these are interrelated in some way right one of one unique you know thing about mono repos are these all are isolated these all are isolated from each other these all are isolated from each other this differentiate like you know your mono repo from your uh, monolithic app as well because the in monolithic app they are you know not isolated but out here all the projects are isolated now if you talk about this project now once they are isolated what happens is they all are in a common repo these all projects are in a common repo right so that can be also possible all in a common repo so what can be possible is they can have a common config file as well that controls them they can have a common config file as well that controls them but what you talk about you know what are the advantage of this first is on advantage first advantage is visibility what advantage is visibility so imagine your entire team is working and they can get idea of other code bases as well looking at other code bases as well a developer one working on p4 can also look into p3 or they can also look into p4 that could be easily possible in this architecture right uh, you know you can look into any code for example d1 is a front-end developer working on a component library they can go ahead and look in a server code right that is also possible with this right now the thing come up what is the next advantage of a uh, mono repo right so you have uh, this big repo we have already talked about like you know there is a common config file as well there could be a common config file as well similarly if you're a front-end developer you might be knowing like eslint so eslint could be common for all of them right there could be a, a component library let's say so this all projects are let's say you know a, a front-end development a front-end uh, websites that use a common component library they can use directly from here that could be also case right uh, there could be other things as well there could be common documentation for this so they could use certain tools uh, that is using documentation and for each of the project there could be you know common documentation right so that could turns out the advantages of this there could be other advantages as well that you might have always thought of it like since they exist in a common place that is you know dependencies on 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 one another so let's say uh, quickly that so so visibility is one of the thing uh, next the next most importantly the dependency dependencies whatever <laughs> so dependencies thing so for example uh, let's say there is a p1 right that is a small project that is worked upon independently right from a developer d1 now there is a developer team of developers d2 d3 d4 let's say right and and they they need certain code from you know project p1 in p4 so they can bring this dependency out here itself in p4 they can bring p1 dependency what advantage is they don't have to go to a third party or you know separate npm package in case of like you know front end development or you know javascript ecosystem they don't need to, don't need to go to the separate npm package and bring that npm package from other registry so dependency management is one of them uh, where you know you can de can be dependent upon uh, different projects in the same repo and you don't need to go to different you know npm packages that you, you have to bring from uh, other npm registry or your same npm registry but it could be remote this uh, were some advantages but 
with this there is a lot of disputed advantages just come in because uh, it is a very large code base and other things so let's talk about first disadvantages so with all the advantages we talked about it also comes with a lot of disadvantages let's talk about them as well so you see like there are a couple of projects here right now what happens is they exist in a common mono repo these all are present in one repo now what happens as you can see project keeps on growing right there is p1 p2 p3 p4 up to pn right there are n number of projects now as it grows there will be a lot of more and more line of code there will be more and more line of code that is one of the issues it grows very big and ulti ultimately it becomes very difficult to manage but there are tools we are going to talk about that manages them but it it is eventually a problem uh, out there for example uh, you know your p4 is growing 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 and it can you know slow down other things as well while building right you don't you can't build p2 when you're building the whole thing right you can build independently but ultimately you have to build everything at once so that can slow down you know p2 this thing this is existing co same code base if you want to move out p2 and publish that as a separate npm package or nugget package and bring here you don't need to bring build p2 every time you're building everything right so it it is added did advantage now one more thing is for example i am a developer d1 who is coming to this repo and they are pretty new to the code base and you want to give only restricted access to certain repo that is not possible in mono repo because the entire code base is shared with everyone because again like visibility that was the advantage but this also turns out to be to disadvantages because you can't restrict developer one to p1 and p4 you have to give access to all of the project because you are giving access to this common mono repo uh, next thing is you know poor performance of build tools for example git git is one of the uh, version control tools that you that is used in most of the projects uh, so let's say git is used here as well so git ultimately you know start giving uh, poor performance because it's a very large repo and it's very difficult to index right so you can imagine you are running a command like git status or git log or git add or git commit anything and it's taking like you know minutes so it's a very bad developer experience so this, this that like you know big mono repo can lead to that as well uh let's talk about some tools now uh which can you know uh do something and improve your mono repos there are a lot of tools coming in like there are tools like turbo repo there are tools like you know yarn workspaces uh there are build tools like rush uh, babel let's talk about them as we talked about like this code base grew very very large so what happens is, is your scripts and uh, your 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 testing when you're testing your code when you're building something that all become very very slow eventually because there is very lot of things to build there is very lot of things to test right so eventually this becomes very very slow right so what big ticks have done something in this area is they have brought their own tools and they have their own way to manage this dependency so one of them is uh, buck right so buck is by facebook or meta right so these tools are used to you know uh, run scripts uh, test or build uh, certain things right so buck is used by meta or facebook to you know uh, run the scripts bazel is by yet another tool by google and they use it heavily to you know build and test rust is another tool uh, by you know microsoft they also heavily used like you know uh, in the projects where they want to you know manage dependency and do other other stuff as well so these are some tools you can look into buck Be uh, bazel and rust buck you can simply see the example in react native repo right if you go to react native uh, facebook repo you will find that they are using bug there will be a bug file right so th this is how they manage right right uh, next thing is when you have multiple projects in a mono repo it's very difficult to you know publish that package so other people can use it it is also very difficult to manage this package right so there is a tool known as learner right 
Lerna. Very usually it's combined with Yarn or NPM, right? To do lot of lot of stuff. But Yarn or your Lerna does is, for example, you have three packages in a monorepo. It can simplify the process of publishing and manage dependency in a repo. So you can publish like this package individually, build this package individually. Like you, if you want to build only P2, you come to P2 and run your script and it's done, right? So this is how Learn also manages it simplify uh, publishing processes. Uh, next next thing is you know when when you are using Yarn, there is something known as Yarn workspaces, and same thing could be applied to npm as well because they they give the workspaces as a concept. Right. So in the root of your project, you can simply mention, you know, what are the packages your uh, project consists, right? And certain like this, and you mention something like this, and component is a package that will be available in your repo, right? And you can just simply import something from at the rate components. You don't need to do like dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot and certain things like that. So these were some tools that make simpler uh, uh, the monorepo development and working with monorepo, right? So there are other things as well that we can cover in monorepo, but this was a, some like kind of gist where you could understand like, you know, monorepo and you can explore, start exploring monorepo if you're interested, right? So that's it for this video. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you're liking this, just share with your friends and comment down in the section like you know what other videos you want to see and if you have any doubt comment that as well i'll see you next time till then take care bye, -bye.